this is a winch uh, I got made by Warren. I'll link this below, but I've got it lagged up into the ridge beam and then it's, um, it doesn't use electricity. It's a drill drive. So you just got to hook it up and then forward and reverse will raise and lower it. So I'll be using that to lift the beam into place. I'd estimate this thing uh, to be a, between 120 and 150 pounds, somewhere in there, and it's probably the heaviest lift just getting it up onto the scaffolding. But after that, it's not bad at all. Uh, the winch does all the work, as you can see. Um, just makes it super easy. You can see here, this is a segmented arch, so I'm grabbing my four foot level and I'm plumbing down from the center of the ridge beam and I'm looking for that very metal splice in the, the center of the arch and that helps me make sure that the whole thing is centered. At this point I'm using clamps to align the sides of the arch. This is the most critical part uh, because you're going to be scribing the cuts on the end. You've got to make sure that everything is plumb and level both at the ends and in the center. So it takes a little bit of time and it takes some finagling to get that just right, but it pays off whenever you try to do your final uh, installation. There was a little bit of twist in the, the beam, so what I'm doing is um, screwing into the side rafter beams, and then I'm, I'm using that as a point to anchor my clamp to and then I can kind of pull that bottom cord around where I need it to be and take the twist out of it. The next step in this whole operation is to scribe my cuts on, the, on both ends. I rough cut them in the shop just to get them close to what I thought it would be, but there's no way to get that exact in the shop. So you've got to put it up here, scribe the cuts, take it back down, cut it, and then put it back up. So the next step then again is to get my scribe cuts. So I make this block approximately the width of what I want to take off. And then what I can do is just slide that up in here and then just mark the bottom edge so that it gives me the line there. You can come up here, get the very top mark there. The other thing that happens is on a beam this big as you're putting it together it kind of twists so you want to make sure that you're checking um, to make sure that it, the beam is fairly plumb and that this edge is plumb with the sides of my beams up there also uh, that's the crucial thing and then I'm also working on it to try and make sure that it stays plumb on the sides and across the bottom also. So as you can see here, I've got this rigged up um, with a screw up here to pull this up um, to help get that beam plumb and level. Had to do the same thing over there on that end also. So next thing I'm gonna do is take it down and make those cuts and then I'll have to install my blocking and put it back in. Right now I've got my beam ends cut. It's all staged and ready to go up. I've got my framing uh, blocking in on the sides and that's lagged with 10 inch lags up into the framing inside of that beam. I'm just gonna show you real quick a little bit of uh, some detail things. So here you can see framing. I'm gonna climb up here without falling. It's a long way down. So this block has 10 inch lags, uh, four of them. And then I've got one in here also. Uh, and then I put PL on the insides that will catch some of this and give me a really strong bond. This PL is also, or these blocks also are PL'd to this and to each other. The, uh, I take my block plane 
and I uh, kind of back bevel that edge just in case my saw was out of kilter. That way I don't have any nasty gaps there. And these are the screws. I put a washer on these, but those go up in there and catch this framing material up here. So four of those in that and one in this top block it gives me a really solid connection. Quick rundown on how I install these king posts. So those are lock mitered corners. Um, so all I do is install some blocking with PL, um, put a handful of GRKs and a big lag screw. There's, there's extra blocking in the center here and then tie it into the ridge beam up there also. And then I'll PL around this, install the lock mitered post and fasten it into that and that'll tie the center of the truss bottom cord into the ridge beam and everything will be super solid. Here's a quick look at the inside of this king post before I close it up. See the PL up there on the blocks, the lock mitered corners. So I'll just pop this other piece in and uh, pin nail it together. All right, well, that's a wrap for today. I got both bottom cords and uh, key posts installed. So tomorrow I get to come back and clean up all my tools, tear down scaffolding, throw trash away, etc. I really can't say enough about this winch. It uh, is so handy. I honestly, I don't even really know how I would have done it without it by myself. And quite honestly, I think this was way safer than having two guys. I really do. So I think that was about 120 bucks. I'll link it up below. Well, well, well worth the money. So here's the trusses all done. Got my van loaded up with scaffolding, getting ready to take that home. Got everything cleaned up. Go up here to the loft. See, they turned out really nice. It's a very massive, great room. Again, the trusses are 10 by 10. Very happy with how all the joinery and cuts came together.